Um, I bet you guys have tons of Genshin characters and with that you of course have to decide which to bring into the Abyss. But what if you have some overlapping units or don't know what better teams you could build? Well, hello there, Flip here and today I'm going to be expanding all of your horizons to even more competitive team options for characters you may not be using to their fullest potential, whether that is underrated units that could fill in roles you don't have, or a different playstyle that allows you to shift some of your units to another team to help you clear some Abyss checks. And before we do that, hello Genshin players, have you ever wanted more gacha? For your gacha? Well in that case, I'm here to proudly announce the sponsor of today's video, Genshin Box, which is a free third party Genshin site where you can work towards winning a lot of items like Welcome Wounds and Genesis Crystals, as well as test your luck in their various different Genshin boxes, they even have a very cute folk colors one here. Every day you're going to be able to open a free box that nets you some rewards, and now with their new feature you're going to be able to double up on what you win, and that's not all because they host giveaways that are free for everyone to enter on the site. You can look at all the positive reviews with people giving feedback and just overall loving Genshin Box, so make sure to go to the description below to check out for yourself and once again thank you Genshin Box for sponsoring the video. Now back to it. What that nerd said. Anyways let's kick things off with Yolan. Yolan is traditionally played as an off-field hydro damage dealer slash enabler to basically just help your team proc extremely strong hydro reactions and even on teams outside of this her single target output and her A4 buff make her an extremely valuable off-field damage dealer universally so with that in mind how could you possibly open up more playstyles? One option I don't see talked about enough is that even without C6, on-fielding Yolan is still a very competent option for single target, and Yolan has a lot of traits that make her a good on-fielder or just can make her on-field playstyles more preferred. Her massive HP pool coupled in with Jinchou's mitigation makes her able to easily not need a heavy defensive option in her teams. You are also able to run a weapon like Aqua much easier and on top of that Yolan gets to take advantage of her own A4, giving herself a buff, which as she is a HP scaler is hard to have. She's also a really good driver of off-field characters like C6 Fischl, Beidou, or Jingchou because she has no hit lag due to her being a bow user, and she has quite fast normal attacks coupled in with the fact that you can also play in a very quick swappy way, getting full uptime of all your character's abilities. The teams that gave me the best results were Jingchou Fischl Kazaha, or Fischl Beidou Jingchou. And that's not all I have for Yolan, because for some reason, due to Jingchou's really fast Hydra application, some people think Yolan's is bad, which... Yeah, I don't know who started the Sigma that Yulon can't enable Hu Tao as a solo Hydra applicator, but they need to be thrown off the nearest bridge because I've been fighting this battle for literal months and people are still very ignorant to it. I was going to make a whole video covering it, but Yulon banner kind of ended. But TLDR, for Hu Tao, the only way that the Pyro Aura overtaking occurs is when a normal attack, charge attack, and blood blossom all apply Pyro simultaneously. And it's borderline impossible for this to happen with N1C. Hell, if you like, you can do 1 or 2 N2Cs and then go into N1Cs and you won't overlap the blood blossoms. There are also other ways to augment this like getting a Hydro Infusion if you're playing VV Tao or you just using Over Vape Tao. As the Electro ensures that a Pyro Aura can't persist on the enemy. Moving on, you have the better half Adeptus Yanfei. All the recent talk concerning Yanfei's place in the meta always comes from people using Shield Fei, which is fine. Shield Fei is a pretty solid option and has its positive over other- Bleh. Shield Fei is a pretty solid option and has its positives over other shielders, but I feel like all this Shield Fei talk is taken away from the fact that Yonfei herself is a really solid carry and has insane quality of life over other on-field pyro damage dealers. A C6 Yonfei with an R5 Widzith or 5 star weapon can output around the same amount of single target DPS as a C0 Yomiya shielded team, while Yonfei also has a lot of AoE on her burst, skill, charge attacks and ascension 4 passive, and she's able to do combos to frontload a lot of damage very quickly making her great for multi-wave content too. And and unlike the daily Genshin experience, her quality of life doesn't end there either, because her C1 makes her have very little stamina issues even though she's a charge attack DPS, and her C4, especially when paired with Jingchou, allows you to just face tank a lot of damage when performing her combos. And unlike other shielders that can run out through their uptime since Yonfei's shield is cast at the start of her string, you just won't run into this issue. The only major con to all of Yonfei's upsides is that they just decided to give her crippling energy issues because why not? So you're either going to have to burst every other rotation, extend your rotation with Bennett's ease, or use two fabs and give Yanfei around 130 energy recharge. But overall she's a great carry if you want to change things up and if this bitch didn't exist, I think she'd be viewed in a better light. Now let's move on to talk about an field unit and my favourite one at that, Fischl. Oh wait, actually before that I didn't get to say it because of the ad, but if at any point during the video you're entertained or informed, make sure to drop a like and even consider subscribing, as I talk on various topics regarding Genshin's meta and I'll try to keep you updated. So, 
Fischl's an off-field damage dealer, we all know this, and currently she's being spotlight in Dendro teams primarily aggravate, but I feel like people are still undervaluing how flexible Fischl really is, and how she can essentially act as a jigsaw piece to a lot of teams. Keeping on the theme of Dendro, a rhetoric I've heard pushed a lot is that Fischl is bad for Hyperbloom, or can't be used there, which is kind of not really that truthful. Because Jingchou and Yolan are such valuable units, a lot of the time you may want to separate them or you might just not have Yolan, in which case Fischl can take up one of the Hydra units place. And with this, the Electro Trigger is still going to be proking Hyper Blooms, and Fischl is adding on her single target damage that does get some aggravates in, and especially after the Golden Trope buff Fischl received, the damage between these two variants isn't that far off. On top of that, because of how EC interacts with Dendro, for Burgeon teams, using Fischl can also increase your seed generation, while also again adding in Fischl's own high personal damage. And if Nilu didn't have her bullshit restriction, Fischl would probably be used to great effect there as well. And for when you want to spread Alhytham, if you are going to be running a defensive Dendro option with Alhytham, instead of using Kuki, you can again slot Fischl in this place due to her damage. And yes, I am aware that you aren't proking Fischl's A4 as frequently in these teams, but it's not really like Fischl's A4 procs are all of her damage anyways. And the last thing I want to cover for Fischl is Overvate. For both Hu Tao and the National Court to clear single target DPS checks, or if your Onoma unit is on another side of the Abyss, you can slot Fischl into these teams and she would actually help your Pyre unit vape all of their hits, especially for Hu Tao if you're solo Yulon with her and want more consistency with N2C combos. Because Hydro and Electro coexist, we're never going to actually have Electro override your Hydro aura, but if a Pyro aura is applied then Fischl's Electro will overload it, allowing you to just reapply the Hydro again. And then for the National Court, she basically just acts as a budget ride-in, and the team is harder to play than rational but it is a really good option you can do. And while well, that's enough talk about the best Electro unit in the game, let's now talk about a different one. Lisa. I feel like a lot of people talk about how Lisa improved with Dendro, but very few people actually talk about what teams Dendro opened up for her. The most obvious one, seeing as she is an Electro Catalyst, is on-fielding Lisa and allowing her to drive Fischl on aggravate teams. Lisa does also have a defense shred, which is quite nice for this team, and since you are on-fielding her and you're using her with Fischl, you can actually gear into Lisa's damage on this team and use her hold ease if you want to give into her ridiculous scaling. And Lisa's damage with her AoE is honestly not a slouch either. And she also enables Fischl to do more damage through her defense shred, which is something the other Electro Aggravate drivers don't really do. Aside from that, to go back to her off-field defense shredding route, for our Hytham or Tignari spread teams, give her a fav and load her up with a fuck ton of ER, and just use her burst whenever it's ready. Since Dendro damage dealers in general don't have that many ways to amp their damage, using Lisa is a nice workaround and also scales really well with her investment. And lastly, Lisa does also have her Hyperbloom teams, where she runs full EM and triggers the Dendro Seeds with her burst, but I think this is kind of just the weakest of her teams, as Hyperblooms don't scale with her defense shred and there are also uptime issues making it a pain to play. So well, let's just close out the video with the last character I wanted to talk about today, Lynette. This QT Patuti is often just looked at as a Sucrose and Kazuha downgrade, which is true, but she does have some teams with her I like that I think could be explored a lot more. One of the biggest ones is her synergy with Kazuha. Lanaza's solo Verdescent support sucks because she has like actually no grouping. Even the grouping she supposedly gets from her C1 is barely anything and a pain to play with if enemies are even decently spaced out. Also, Viridescent is a massive waste on her since her swirls are very inconsistent, and using the set also sacrifices her own personal damage, which can be quite high. So to patch this up, I think going with double Onimo ends up being your best bet. Lynette's Vivid Shorts do a lot of infused damage, but not enough infused damage to where it's worth building into any damage bonus that isn't Onimo. Kazuha can help circumvent this by red shredding and giving you a damage bonus of the element your vivid shots absorb, allowing you to just spec into Lynette's damage through either Emblem or the Hunter set. Lynette also has some dickhead energy requirements, which is something a Fav or Ziffos Kazuha can really help with, allowing your Lynette to run a more damaging option. And my favorite double Onimo Lynette teams will be up on screen because I'm too lazy to sound them all out. And for today, that will be all the characters you aren't using to their fullest potential. If there are any other characters with underrated playstyles you think deserve a mention, make sure to notify me either through Discord or the comments below, and it could potentially be featured in a video. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts on these teams, as I'd love to hear it and I respond to almost every single comment. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace.